Now in this video we're going to be looking at a quick recap on histograms from higher GCSE. Okay. Now I'm also going to throw in uh, estimating the mean and median as well, okay, um, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, but I'm going to go straight from the bare bones basics first. Now a histogram is effectively a bar chart for continuous data. Now you'll know what a bar chart is, okay? Um, you might have something like red, yellow, blue. So you've got these separate bars, okay, with a height for frequency. And each of the bars are exactly the same width. For histograms, we're working with continuous data, so the um, you'll still have frequency up the side, but you would have um, things like height or weight along the bottom axis, and each of the bars would be the same width again, but they would be touching, okay? Now, in this example, the bars are not the same width, okay? We've got a gap of 10 here, a gap of 5, a gap of 15, and a gap of 20. This is still a histogram. This is one of the more complicated histograms that we need to deal with, okay? And when you graph it, you can't have a y-axis or vertical axis that is of frequency, okay? Because that graph really makes no sense anymore because you've got gaps of diff well, or bars of different widths. So what we need to do is we actually need to look at frequency density. So we build in a new column called frequency density which effectively turns this into not looking at the height of the bars, but you're now going to look at the areas of the bars. And the area tells you how much is there. Now, the frequency density can be calculated by dividing each of your frequencies by the widths of each of your bars. So you would have 8 divided by 10, for example. So you'd have 0.8 you'd have 22 divided by 5, which is 4.4. You'd have 45 divided by 15, which is 3. And you'd have 18 divided by 20, which is 0 0.9. And these are your frequency densities. Now let's see what that would look like graphically. So. Up here we would have frequency, oh, frequency density, and along the bottom we're going to have time, t. Okay, so from 0 to 10 we're at 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 from 0 to 10. So let's go up in fives here. Let's make sure I've got enough, I'm going up to 50. Um, that's probably too wide a gap. Let's try this again. Should have thought this before. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That'll do. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So between 0 and 10, this bar is at 0 0.8. Okay? Then we've got between 10 and 15, we're at 4.4. So 10 and 15, very high bar. I'm not going to make this an accurate graph. Okay, so that will be 4.4. Then between 15 and 30, we're at 3. So I'm going to drop it slightly, 15 to 30. That can be 3. And then 30 to 50, we're at 0 0.9. So 30 to 50, we're at 0 0.9. Okay? So a frequency diagram, or a histogram rather, can look like this. So you've got these bars of different widths, and it's the area that uh, represents the frequency, or how many are in each bar. Okay, so what can we do from this? 
Well, we could be asked to estimate the mean, for example. So, estimate mean. Now, in order to estimate the mean, um, I need to know the total number of times that I have, or the total amount of time, rather, <clears throat> and divide it by the total frequency. Now, the total frequency I can work out very accurately. So 8, 22, 45, and 18 I can add together. So 8 and 2 is 10, 15, 23, 3, 7, 8, 9. So 93 is my frequency. OK. Now, from a frequency table, this is very easy to do. OK, we can work, we can estimate the mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that that's not there. And we've just got the frequency, uh, the histogram, rather. OK, now what I use are the midpoints of each of the um, bars because I don't actually have that information, the individual raw data. That's why this is an estimate of the mean only. Okay, so what I would have is the midpoint of this bar, which is 5, multiplied by its frequency. Now I know that it's 0.8, okay, times by 10. So effectively, this is a bar value 8. So 5 times 8. <clears throat> Plus, right, well, this. The midpoint of this bar, that's at 15, so this would be 12.5 times by the value of that bar, so 4.4 times 5, okay, which gets me 22, plus the midpoint of this bar, so that's uh, 15 to 30, okay, so the midpoint is there, so 22.5 times by the value of this bar, so 3 times 15, so 45, plus the midpoint of this bar, which I can see is 40, and times that by the value of that bar, so 0 0.9 times by 20, so that gets me the 18. So each of these numbers are exactly what I had as my frequencies, and then I would divide that by the total number of frequency, total amount of frequency, so 93. Okay, so we'd have 5 times 8 plus 12.5 times 22 plus 22.5. Sorry, my calculator went, went wrong there. Uh, plus 22.5 times 45 plus 40 times 18. And then divide that by 93. OK, and we get 22.02 to two decimal places. OK, so make sure that that makes sense. 22.02, that makes sense. That's where you'd probably expect the mean to be, around about that kind of area where the majority of the data is. OK, so that's how we can estimate the mean. Now, you can either look at it from a tabular point of view, or you can look at it straight from the uh, histogram. OK? So now what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the median. So. Estimate the median. OK. Now, this is a little bit more fiddly, OK? And the way to do it is to think of this. Now, because we're doing uh, continuous, working with continuous data rather than discrete data, I'm not going to add 1 and then divide by 2, OK? So we're going to keep with the 93, and we're going to go halfway. So halfway of the 93, and we're going to go for the 46.5th uh, bit of data. So 46.5 is my halfway through for the median. <clears throat> uh, 
OK, so how you want to look at this is if you're thinking about where the 46.5 point is, um, well, we've got 8, then we've got 22, so that's 30. So we know that the 46.5 data point, effectively, is going to be within that bar there. OK? So if we're looking at within that bar, then what we're going to need is to set it up really as a number line. This is probably the easiest way to visualize it. So let this number line effectively represent that bar. Okay, so we're going from uh, 15 to 30. Okay. And on the bottom of this, what I want to do is I want to represent this as, because um, effectively my median is going to be somewhere between this 15 and 30, okay? So if I represent it with an M for median, it's going to be somewhere in this gap. How I can look at this is I can go, well, 8 and 22 would be 30, so I know that there are 30 data points below that 15. And I then know that at its maximum point, I will be at 75. Okay? By on this point, there are 75 bits of data, the frequency, total frequency, and then we've got the remaining 18 afterwards. Now, the median is going to appear at the 46.5th bit of data. Okay? And effectively what we're going to do is we're going to use common ratios or similar ratios here. So that if we think about the ratio between M and 15 and 30 and 15, this will be the same as the ratio between 30 and 46.5 and 30 and 75. So what we can do is we can write it as M take away 15. Okay, so that distance over the total distance, 30 take away 15, is equal to 46.5 over 30. 46.5 take away 30, rather, over 75 take away 30. Okay, so if we simplify this up, we've got the M take away 15. We know that. We can work out what this is. So 46.5 take away 30, so 16.5. I'm going to divide that by 75 take away 30, so 45. And then we're going to multiply both sides by the 15. And then, well, that is 5.5. And so M, the median, is 5.5 plus 15, so 20.5. OK, so that gives me an estimate for the median. This is probably the easiest way to visualize estimating the median in this case okay that's probably the most difficult thing to be asked for uh, a histogram okay so it is definitely worth you having a few goes at it